Hello, my name is Jim Fight. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I build the jigs and templates I use to make my landing nets. All of my nets start with a full scale drawing on a large sheet of paper. I start by marking a center line and marking the size of the hoop and handle out down the length of that center line. So for this net, I wanted a 16 inch long hoop by approximately 12 inches wide and with about a 14 inch long handle. I then determine the widest part of that net and mark it out approximately six inches so that I have that 12 inch wide hoop. At this point, I fold the paper down the center line and draw out the profile of the hoop and handle. I tend to eyeball this part and use a 12 inch ruler to aid in my drawing. You may find that a, a French curve set might help as well. But this is where I determine the shape of the entire landing net. So I may go through a few iterations of the designs before I settle on the one I'm going to actually build. I like to spend a little extra time on the transition from hoop to handle until I'm happy with how it looks. Then it's as simple as cutting it out and unfolding it to reveal your symmetrical drawing. You're going to want to pay close attention to the top of the hoop so that it's not pointy and also the transition of the hoop to the handle. This portion in my first couple of designs felt a little fat and I needed to slim it down. Here I'm cutting the bottom of the template off. The handle will also have a flat top. This will create a flat surface where the hoop jig and handle meet so as to allow me to align the two during glue up. Next I use spray adhesive to glue the paper templates onto the malamine jigs. Even though I cut the throat out of the handle on the paper template, I'm going to keep the flat top so it will retain the flat surface I need to make the hoop jig and handle together. Once dry, I take them over to the bandsaw and cut them out. I am careful to leave around a sixteenth of an inch worth of extra material that I can bring down to its final dimension at my oscillating belt sander. This part is something I want to spend some time on because it will ultimately be the shape of the hoop so any little bumps and unevenness will reflect in the finished product. Here you can see how the handle template and hoop jig made up. Next I get to work by cutting the inside of the hoop jig out. I like to leave around an inch and a half of material as the hoop thickness. I found that if I make it smaller, the pressure I put on it during the clamping process will sometimes split the malamine. Next I use my handle template to trace out my handle on this piece of maple burl. I then take it to the bandsaw and cut it out leaving it slightly larger than my final dimensions. From here I use the painter's tape and CA glue trick to attach my template to the maple burl. This way I can reuse this handle template again in future builds. I then take this to my router table using a templating bit to trim it down to the final dimension. A flush trim bit works good for this too. And voila! You can see how I pulled apart the template from the finished handle. Now I start making the outside calls, but I forgot to show a step here. Let me explain how this part is going to determine if you have a good glue up or a not so good one. What I do is take my hoop jig and I lay it down on the malamine I'm going to use for my outside calls. Now I think about the thickness of my actual hoop is going to be. So it's going to be 3 eighths of an inch thick. I need to make a wooden spacer, a simple strip I cut on my bandsaw that's 3 eighths of an inch thick, maybe like 3 or 4 inches long. Then I cut a small notch on the side of this where my pencil lead is going to ride. I then take this and butt it up against the hoop template and trace it out on the malamine. This way I have a call that will fit correctly against the laminations that I'm going to be clamping. As you can see, now I'm screwing on quarter inch plywood backing to all the malamine calls, which I will then flush trim to the malamine. This does two things. It brings the thickness of the call up to one inch, which is the starting thickness of my handle. And it also adds some stiffness to the malamine, which I will need when I start applying all the force with the clamps during the glue up process. Now I need a bridge piece that connects the handle to the hoop jig. This is just a piece of scrap quarter inch plywood that I screw into the hoop jig and the handle, making sure that the holes in the handle are centered at the top so as not to interfere with the finished shape of the throat. Now I use one and a quarter inch screws that I have to grind down to an inch so that they won't stick out on the opposite side of the jig. I need all of my pieces to lay flat on my workbench. Here you can see I'm screwing my bridge piece down to the hoop jig. First, I line up the handle perfectly and I use a clamp to hold it in place while I drill a hole through the bridge into the handle. Then I put a screw in and I drill the second hole and repeat. Now I'm ready to glue the laminations to the handle. My laminations are usually around 3 128th of an inch thick. I use between 10 to 12 of these for each one hoop. I cut them on the table saw and I bring them down to thickness on my drum sander. I don't have to steam them at this thickness, but with this, many I have to work fast before the glue starts to harden. A little trick I learned to flip them on and and make one big laminations before you start clamping. Let this sit for one minute and then start putting them in your jig. Because 
what will happen is once you start pulling your calls around the hoop, the laminations are going to want to slide on each other. Mostly the outside will want to slide up. You're going to need to constantly push the laminations down so you have a flat hoop. If you don't, it's going to be an issue later. Another problem area is where the hoop laminations meet the handle. Typically it's tough to clamp that spot and have no gaps. Two things help with this. One is when you make your calls and accommodate and then accounted for your hoop thickness. This allows your calls to conform to the jig tighter and lessens the chances of you having that gap. Another thing that will help is having thin wedges, very thin wedges. Typically I cut, I have little cutoffs from the laminations themselves to shove between the call and the hoop lamination itself to apply that needed pressure in the troublesome spot. It can be fixed after the glue up, but it obviously would be optimal if you didn't have to. Then you quickly saw how I run the net through my drum sander till all the surfaces are flush on either side. Then I shape where the laminations meet the handle, and then I route out the groove on the hoop where the Dacron thread will lie. I then drill the holes in that groove. I have a 1 8 by 1 8 inch groove, but I use a 7 64 inch bit so as to not touch the sides of the groove for a much cleaner look. From here you sand, sand, and sand some more, then apply some finish, sew on a bag, and you got yourself a landing net. Look, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is merely a brief overview of my process. If you have questions, feel free to leave me a comment and I'll answer it to the best of my ability. Again, thanks for watching.